Do you ever feel like you just can't get yourself to draw? Like, you know, it's something that you like to do, but you feel this kind of inexplainable resistance to doing it. This is a feeling that I have had so much <laughs> in the past few years. And I came to the realization that I think it's because I felt like I was behind in my art career, which made it really hard to act and take any kind of step forward. It's like, why would you want to draw if you feel like you're behind? It's like, what's the point, right? Hello, my name is Erica Wiseman, aka Erica the Goober. I've been a freelance artist since 2018. And in this video, we are going to talk about the feeling of having fallen behind. No, feeling like you've fallen behind. Over the past few years, this feeling that I had fallen behind kept popping up for me. It usually appears in this um, kind of destructive cycle. I get the feeling like I don't know what to draw or how to make things anymore, so I try to think my way through it by watching videos and journaling and just trying to figure out the problem at any cost. I feel like I literally cannot put my pencil to paper and make something just like anything at all. But then something happens, usually some kind of like self-imposed deadline or like even an external deadline on a project I'm working on. And I actually make something and afterwards I usually think to myself, hmm, why was I fighting so hard to not do this? It's really not that bad. But then a few days will pass and then I'm right back to trying to figure out the reason why I don't want to draw and what is wrong with me. It's an incredibly frustrating cycle that I've experienced countless times, especially in this past year. It seems like every time I start to feel a little bit better again, I keep falling back into these thoughts slash behavior patterns that keep me stuck. But this last time I experienced this, it was different. I felt that little bit of doubt creeping in, so I decided to journal about it. I asked myself, why was I making myself draw if I didn't want to draw? And the answer I came to was, the reason I was drawing was because I was just trying to feel better making art. And the only way that I knew how to fix that was to actually just draw. Drawing became a solution to a problem, not something that I did because I actually wanted to do it. It was kind of a means to an end. I decided to dig a little bit deeper with this and question why I was so desperate to feel better making my art again, besides the obvious answer of why wouldn't I want to feel better. And I think I felt kind of a sense of regret. Um, I thought about how much time had passed since I felt connected with what I was creating and all the things that I could have made by now if I didn't feel this way. And I just, I really felt like I had fallen behind. So after I came to that kind of root feeling or belief, it sparked a whole nother chain of thoughts and made me question like, where did this start? This feeling of like fallen behind has been in my mind for a few years now, and it's appeared in a couple different ways, which have always been based in expectation and comparison. So in 2019, I attended Lightbox Expo for the first time and I gotten a few portfolio reviews there. And my objective back then, I remember was to like get a studio job where I could do character design. Um, so that's kind of like the lens through which my portfolio was critiqued. And the feedback I received was like, you know, generally positive with some notes about needing to draw more of a variety of characters rather than mainly cute girls. Overall, it felt like they were telling me like, you're on the right track, but you're not quite ready to be a, uh, an artist in the industry. So this was kind of like what I believed about myself. Like this is where I thought that I was on my art journey. Soon after that in 2020, I got my first freelance job doing some teaching for 21 Draw and doing some character design work for a 3D total book. And, you know, holding that belief that I was, you know, not ready to work in the industry and then getting these jobs, like, I just really thought, you know, there's some kind of mistake. 
I'm not good enough to be doing this yet, let alone teaching other people. So when this happened, like I didn't believe in my ability and I thought like, you know, I'm not good enough to be doing these jobs at all. So I remember like getting prepared to start working on things for like the class and I felt kind of like a, it was a desperate need to get better ASAP because I felt that I wasn't good enough to meet the expectations. I perceived that like the people at 21 Draw or like the um, people at 3D Total might have had of me like from them working with other industry professionals. So I was just really afraid that I was going to embarrass myself or do something wrong. So I would like over prepare by trying to learn the right way to do things before actually starting to work on the class, believing that however I did something, it was not going to be good enough and it was going to need to be corrected. So from this, like outside of freelance jobs, those same thoughts of you're not doing enough and you're not good enough crept into pretty much everything that I was doing. I remember being so critical of my art in like 2020 and 2021. And the most positive thing that I could say about my work was it's fine. Like, I think I was just glad that it was done because the whole experience of making it was me being really toxic to myself and like being, you know, my harshest critic. I really began to rush the process, choosing to do things because I thought others wanted me to do them, not exactly because I was thinking about what I wanted. So after two years of doing this, I just could not do it anymore. And I was basically left a shell of myself as an artist when I started. So I was just like really, really burned out and I needed to take a break. Fast forward to 2022 and I had taken a six month break from Patreon and then a four month break from drawing all together. I did like a uh, creator coaching at the time through Healthy Gamer. Uh, they have like a YouTube channel and stuff. Uh, but that really equipped me with like the tools to work through these mental hurdles I was facing. And I started to kind of restore my relationship with art by trying to create with less pressure again. But it felt like a roller coaster. Like I, some days I was able to show up and draw and other days like the thought of picking up a pencil would send me into a spiral and made me question like are things ever going to get back to the way they were before I made this my job. Despite being able to draw again sometimes, I rarely felt like I wanted to or I knew why I was doing it. I wasn't inspired with new ideas of things I wanted to draw like I used to. I didn't really want to draw. Again, I kind of came to this conclusion that I kept trying to get myself to draw because I thought that doing it would fix the problem of me not wanting to do it. I tried everything else, breaks, coaching, journaling, reading, you know, watching videos with a bunch of different like advice and stuff in them to try to find the answer, but it seemed like the solution to feel better was to just draw, which made me feel worse about the times when it felt like I couldn't get myself to do it. The act of drawing had become just a solution to a problem, and I was obsessed with progress in restoring my relationship with art at all costs because, you know, I just didn't want to feel like this anymore. I wanted to move on from the issue and I wanted to get back to having fun making things again. I would think a lot about the time that I spent trying to fix this problem and how much I could have created by now if the problem didn't exist at all. And it, I didn't like the place I was in. So, you know, I wanted to fix it ASAP. Reflecting on all of those past events, I've come to some realizations. So in both instances, I had expectations or an idea of where I should be in my journey and I felt like I had fallen behind in some way. When I started getting freelance jobs, I wanted to be a better and more capable artist than I believed I was. So I was like looking into the future to say this is what I should already be able to do by now. And then post burnout, I just wanted to get back to things and like how they used to be before burnout, where I was enjoying art and making like a whole lot of things. So I was looking back into the past to see like, you know, I've done this before, I should be able to do this now. 
but neither one of those was focused on the present and I was not meeting myself where I currently was in my journey. The reality of things was that I had stopped drawing. I was very much out of practice. Why should I expect myself to be able to draw as easily as I was before? Like I had been through a lot of things where I had kind of like damaged my relationship with art. Why did I think that it was going to be that easy to just get right back into it? You may have expectations of what you think you should be able to do and where you should be in your art journey based on comparing yourself to what others can do or what you have done in the past. For me, I didn't start feeling like I had fallen behind until I was propelled unexpectedly into my first freelance job. The idea of being a professional artist came with a lot of shoulds. To me, I believed a professional artist should have a certain level of knowledge and be capable of making a lot of art, enjoying their job, having a unique style, and being someone who is authentic and original. I had also come up with what I thought other people's expectations of me were and just straight up believed that I did not meet those expectations. True or not, this is what I thought when I started my professional career. And if I was now a professional artist, I needed to be all of these things Otherwise, I was behind and not enough. So with all of this stuff, like just the feeling that you've fallen behind, like if you believe that, that can keep you stuck in so many different ways. When you feel like you've fallen behind, your mind tells you like, hey, you need to catch up. This is the only solution is for you to catch up. And the idea of catching up made me prioritize progress and improvement at all costs. Not just improvement in art, but trying to get back to feeling good at making art again post burnout. And this idea kind of turned into a toxic perfectionism really fast. So anything that didn't lead to some kind of visible progress was considered a waste of time. And any small step that I made, any small progress did not feel like enough. And this was all kind of like going on in the background of my mind. It wasn't like a conscious thing, more of like a subconscious feeling that by doing these things, I was doing something wrong. So anytime I would make small progress where it wasn't enough, like I would get this like terrible feeling that, you know, like I, I'm not, I'm not enough. This is wrong. This is something wrong for me to do. When you're in a place where you feel like you need to catch up, Having fun and making mistakes seems frivolous because those things don't feel like things you have time for. So you start taking shortcuts to maximize some kind of progress. Ironically, what seems like a shortcut to progress makes it so you take the enjoyment out of creating and then you have a hard time doing it at all. This is exactly what happened to me. I thought that any time I wasn't making something that was like postable or contributing to some kind of like project that I was going to share, it was a waste of my time. So if I was all business, like all business mindset, then no fun. Like how was I supposed to enjoy creating art anymore? Another thing that can happen is you can begin to overthink every single step that you take to make sure it's the right one and you're not wasting any time doing the wrong thing. So you kind of like set up these mental constructs of things that you can do and you can't do, which makes you feel paralyzed and unable to take action out of fear that you'll fall further behind. Here's a list of some things that I noticed myself doing or avoiding doing as a result of feeling like I was behind. So we have trying to avoid struggling with the process, trying to avoid wasting effort on making a bad drawing, trying to only make art that was better than art that I made in the past, avoiding creating from my comfort zone because it wasn't pushing me to grow, shaming myself as a way to get ahead of potential shame by other people, maybe in comments or something, judging my ideas before trying them, overanalyzing and overpreparing. So that list uh, has some pretty, um, troubling and not fun things on it. Uh, not a good time to do that to yourself. And uh, I'm really glad that I 
you know, started journaling and I uh, started reflecting on all the things that were plaguing my artistic process. And uh, I thought a lot about like, you know, what can I do about this? And I've, you know, I've kind of come to this conclusion that, you know, the feeling that you have fallen behind is really just like a feeling and not true. Like you might feel like that when you compare yourself to other people, but if you just look at your own life and where you are, it's all part of a much bigger journey. And by thinking that you need to catch up in some way or that you have fallen behind at all, it makes it hard for you to take any step forward. So you have to kind of like let go of trying to catch up and the idea that you've fallen behind in the first place. It may seem counterintuitive, but both are kind of these beliefs that your mind is seeing as true. And neither one of them is making it any easier to create art. Like I said, this feeling is born from expectations based on what you think you should be able to do based on other people, your past self, or even your future ideal self. Once I became aware that I was doing these things and I understood that I was doing them out of a feeling that I had fallen behind, I noticed a huge shift in my mindset. Whenever I would notice myself thinking or doing one of these things that I listed above, I could assign a reason to why they were happening and tell myself, you know, we don't have to do this anymore. This is just not how we want to work. Being able to catch yourself in these thought patterns and actions is the very first step to being able to move past them. And the biggest key for me was to focus on the present and what was in front of me, just kind of like the action itself. Because really like the only thing you can control are your actions. You don't have any control over the results of your actions. Like you can post something on Instagram that you worked really hard on, but you cannot control whether people see it because of the platform. And also you can't control if people like it. All you can control is that you made it and that you are happy that you spent your time with making it. It's not even so much that you are proud of the thing that you made as in like, it's the best thing you've ever drawn every time you draw something new. It's more so that you are happy to be spending your time this way. When you think about it that way, it helps the worries and the expectations kind of fade more into the background and you can just focus on the task in front of you. You can focus on making art again. Having this feeling that you have fallen behind is all relative. It cannot happen without you comparing yourself to where somebody else is in their art journey or where you think you should be in yours. To somebody else, I may not look like I have fallen behind, even though that's absolutely how I feel. But other people might see that, you know, I do art full time and they might think that they are behind because they're not doing that. And this is absolutely not to say that you should stop trying to grow and improve. It's more of like learning to create and grow because you want to, not because you feel like you should do it out of trying to get some job or uh, trying to feel like you're not behind compared to everybody else or compared to your past self. So I think like the main takeaway from all of this is that you can feel like you're behind and you can feel like you need to catch up, but just having those thoughts at all makes it so much harder to take even the littlest step forward. I think it kind of helps to imagine what it would be like to not feel like that. Like if you didn't have these expectations of yourself and where you think you should be, maybe you wouldn't be scared to draw or like feel a lot of resistance to drawing or creating anything at all because you know that you are, you know, kind of where you're where you're supposed to be on your journey and you can't be anywhere else. You can't be in the future. You can't be in the past. You are where you are right now with your art 
And I think it's important to learn to create from that space because it takes off so much of the pressure. If you related to this video in any aspect at all, I'm so sorry because this is such a tough spot to be in. It is like, it honestly just really sucks. Um, it's very hard to navigate and I'm just really sorry if like you're going through a hard time right now. I just hope that listening to this video helped you in even like the tiniest way. Uh, I would love to hear your thoughts about all this in the comments. Like if you've experienced something similar or um, maybe some things that you've done to help you kind of like get back into art after a hard time with it. Thank you to all my patrons and a very special thank you to my top Patreon supporters for making this video possible. You can join my free tier on Patreon to access this month's free tutorial and get updates on all things Goober. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you in the next video. Bye!